Yeah, I don't know how this election is going to go, but you, you can't go wrong voting Black Love. That's Welcome right. back to the Morning Update Show. My name is Omari Salisbury. I'm Trey Holiday. And we're joined by Marshall and Matt of the Marshall Law Band. Good morning, fellas. What's poppin'? What's, up, What's poppin'? Thank you for having us on. All right, all right. So the, the the last time I only see you now virtually, but the last time I was really saw you face to face, man, these were the days of the Western Barricade and in the, <laughs> the early days of Chop. And I gotta tell people it was crazy. I think it was like day number two of the Western Barricade, and down there. And I see a setup for a band, and it kind of like blew my mind at the minute because we everybody got tear gas yesterday, uh, the day before, and I was like, man, there's a band set up down here. This is like a dangerous space. And <laughs> next thing you know, it's the Martial Law Band, and, and you guys set up and just started jamming down there the whole time we were there in Western Barricade into an early part of the chop. And yeah, it was it's still a vivid memory for me, man. Before we go into, I know you got a new single out and everything. Tell us real quick, what what was the impetus? Like, why did you guys feel that it was that it was important for you to come down there and play your music? And not only play your music, you didn't run away. Um, <laughs> when, when, when the I know you got you guys took a lot of tear gas, you took a lot of pepper spray, you, you took some rubber bullets, and you kept playing, man. What what brought you down and what made you stay? Shoot, shoot. Omari, man, it's you, you it's man. you, brother. It's you, man. I, I can't lie. The day before we went out there, um, wow. you know, I, myself, and, and the band, we had been out there a couple times just trying to look and observe and try to find our role within it. And then I went home that night and I watched you get tear gas for like the third night in a row. And you were screaming. I remember you were, you were like, where is leadership? Where is leadership? Oh, and um, it's a, it's a, it. honestly, it just <laughs> it, it felt like a, a direct call out to us because um, we view ourselves as leaders in a different way in our community. And uh, we knew we didn't necessarily have the skill set or maybe we do, but the passion for being on there in the front lines. But we can use our music and our platform uh, to give people some uh, energy and some hope out there and hopefully provide a different type of leadership. So y'all brought us out there. Well, that, that's interesting to uh, to, to find out. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, man, I'm glad I'm glad you guys were there. It, it was some some nights on the stream was crazy because on on Pine it would just be like chaos, and then you just walk right there on Eleventh of Pike, and here's a martial law band playing, and everybody's just over there dancing and everything else. And so, yeah, it was. Um, man, yep. it seems like it was like two years ago now, but it was just a few months ago. <laughs> We really just tried to bring some balance to the equation, man, out there. It was, like you're saying, so chaotic and aggressive in, in nature that we just saw that this is how we can contribute. And if we can inspire people to find their own lane to contribute, it's going to take all types. You know what I'm saying? I need the people who feel comfortable and empowered standing in the front line doing that. I need people who are computer you know, specialists over here tweaking on the computer. I need people who are working at the legislation level to be listening to the people that they're supporting and guiding and speaking on the behalf of. And all those people need to be working together. Otherwise, it's just going to sit here in the mud. We got a comment here, Van Vanessa Kaysen. It was like the violins playing when the Titanic was sinking. The police were tear gassing everyone. It was chaos, but you could hear the band play on. It was amazing. <laughs> hey, when she took my question, man, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, you guys have had to hear that reference before because that's what I experienced with you guys out there. It was like chaos all around, but you guys were jamming out the whole time and honestly, really setting the tone for those of us who stayed so consistently out there. Like, no, we got to press on. So I, when I was out there, when I got to experience y'all, I'll say that much. I felt the same. You guys yeah. had to do that before. People said it was like uh, the Revolutionary War drummers and stuff, too. You know, for us, people kept running by like, they're coming, they're coming, they're not going to stop. We're like, hey, we're not going to stop. I, I ain't so, running nowhere, bro. I got a drum set. We got sound equipment. I got a stage. Like, So I got I to gotta, I gotta keep it real, man. <clears throat> so, some of the hardest people, some of the hardest people around the Seattle protests was the artists, right? And so... Like another example is Brian Culpepper, July 25th, July 25th. I mean, that was the day everybody got beat down. It was, it was crazy. 
And so you had the protesters and the police right there at Seattle Central College. And Culpepper puts all of his art up there on the wall. And, you know, it's well because you, you really have the police, the protesters engaged. It's, it's flashbangs. There's this pepper spray going. He's just in there just drawing. And everybody's like, dude, what are you doing? He was like, somebody got to be calm. So it kind of it kind of reminds me, especially of that that last Sunday. It was June, the night of June 7th. And that was that was a crazy night up there on on the hill. The National Guard's moving in. They're coming down uh, 11th towards Pike to where you guys were at. And it was literally one of those nights where everybody was like, man, you know, running down down the street. And the band kept playing. I guess that's what got you guys that known as the, the, the Seattle protest or the chop or the Western Barricade, the protest house band. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you know how it goes oh that the media be taking everything and running with it i think what we like uh you know hold on to the most is when like 1 30 2 a.m hit and they were still going down and some protesters decided to sit by our stage and protect us no matter what was going to happen and when they turned around and we were playing cleos and they marched back uh that feeling of resistance like we really stood together and stood for something as a unit uh that's something that can never like can't be duplicated it can't be replicated and it can't be taken away from the people that experienced that moment so it, it was life altering in, in so many ways and now you just i mean the media is going to call us whatever they called me uh chaz marshall of antifa on fox news so well, you know I mean? you, can't, you can't control that type of stuff Right. Well, you know, it's um, I think that a lot of a lot of people, especially there in those early days, nobody really knew up from down. All you knew was to do was to be present. Me, all I knew what to do was just to have my phone and record and not necessarily always just the interactions between the police and protesters, but record people. Talk to them. Why are you here? That's all we knew what to do. So, you know, what you guys knew what to do was to play and that you did. Let's talk about this new single out now. A new single called Louder. Tell us about it. Well, what you you want to let them know, Matt? Man, uh, it's really like our ode to James Brown, man. The godfather, the hardest working man in show business. And, uh, you know, his message when he came out with Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud, was, was revolutionary at the time, was groundbreaking at the time, was powerful and empowering for people who had been beaten down for hundreds of years. And so our, I guess, role in carrying the torch, the next leg of the leg of the race is just to say it louder, you know, like I'm black and I'm proud. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and, you know, for us and uh, they were talking, you know, uh, the segment prior before we came on with the black love segment, it's really that same um, sentiment of, Hey, we see black people getting murdered. We see people getting beat up. We see black people upset all the time. It's time to show some positive black imagery that shows the 360 approach that black people have towards life, even during moments of struggle. So the song itself, it reflects that same chaotic uh, uh, things we were just talking about. But the imagery shows the triumphant spirit of black people, especially here in Seattle. You know, we're a small group. We got to let stick our chest out and let people know, like, even if we're only 7%, you're going to feel us here in this city. All right. So we got it. We got a small clip right here that we'll play right now. Oh, black and proud. Granddaddy went from slavery to the army South Central LA where he raised Randy Who taught me son cops don't play no, Marshall just do yeah whatever they say They power hungry and they just might spray yes, Just live to fight another day You know good to nobody dead So I remember one time I was doing just fine With the windows down the seat on recline Out the corner of my eyes saw some flashing blue lights And I thought god I might die Yeah he came to my side told me step outside And I said officer why He said to see if you got warrants See hatred is apparent even though you've never done a crime That is a hot song and video. I'm going to just say that right now. I'm going to just say, uh, number one fan right here, I tell y'all, man, that is a hot (laughs) song. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'm just wondering. That, that video shoot looks fun. How come I never get invited to the fun? People invite me to talk on panels about Amari, police and protests. I don't get no invite to the video shoot. Hey, yeah. we, all, we all got our role, Big O. Come on. We <laughs> We're making the end up. You're Yo. on the next one. We just had Converge shoot the last music video we did with the gutter balls. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all gonna get the invite on this is the last time you won't see. Well, actually, we have a couple we'll see, of you know, I'm not in that with you. It's, it's fine, I know you just, you just call me up when you need to get on the show, like, yeah, you know. yeah. Hey, come on, my bad, big old. No, no, man, you know, it's 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 all love. Um, but before before we let you get out of here, I mean, clearly, you, you guys are releasing a single because you have an upcoming album. Just tell us a little bit about um, when when, when the album's coming out, and what people can expect to find on there. Absolutely. So this is uh, we're premiering this video on our own YouTube channel. We're trying to get like converge and, you know, build some uh, ownership. So we want to say thank you all so much for just, uh, you know, playing that clip. You guys can see the full video 7 p.m. on the Martial Law Band YouTube. I'm sure you all will link it. And then we're dropping our album, which is called Twelfth and Pine on October 23rd. Pre-sales are out available everywhere. And if you're a real one, you can go to Bandcamp and just buy it outright. Um, and again, we're trying to put black dollars into black people's pockets you feel me directly and so we all know how streaming services do people so we're trying to find ways to circumnavigate that and put money because we put up our own money to uh create this independent venture that we're doing here so yeah 12th and pine comes out october 3rd or 23rd we got a bunch of different videos a documentary a graphic novel a big o's on the back cover and whatnot uh, so we pulled out all the stops to let people know uh, about the experience we just went through this summer and uh, let people know that uh, you're going to have a soundtrack to continue to fight towards because this is a marathon, not a sprint. And uh, we're going to be right here playing music for you. all I and love it. Come all on. All, all hey, no. Go ahead. All the music we wrote on this album, minus two songs, two. Uh, came from our experience down there at the chop. We... Went from playing, you know, six hour sets each night. And then there was just this void again because of COVID. We haven't been gigging. So we went from a 50 day national tour to 60 days, not a single rehearsal. And so after that, we just had all this energy and emotion and experience. And we just like went away together and got like an Airbnb on an island, just stayed out there for four days, wrote the album, came straight from the Airbnb to the studio and just hunkered it out in five days. And this is like the result of that. Man, good stuff, good stuff. You know, people can also go on the uh, Where We Converge um, website to uh, under podcasts, as well as on, on Spotify, on Apple, on Google and SoundCloud. And you can catch my interview that I did with Marshall Law. We, we did a series called Citizens of the Chop and it was recorded during the chop. So we actually, we interviewed 10 people um, right there when the chop was going on. It's called Citizens of the Chop, and there's actually an episode there with Marshall Law. Matt Marshall, wishing you guys the best of luck. You know, the, the track sounds hot. That's 7 o'clock tonight on the Marshall Law Band YouTube page. They're doing the premiere there. Go ahead and support these guys. The album is out October 23rd. It's called 12th and Pine. We're going to take a short break right now. When we come Appreciate back, we you got... You're very welcome. We got <laughs> producer Nikki Barron talking